If you're looking to buy a new gaming laptop, you're likely sifting through countless options that kind of look the same, but can offer significantly different levels of performance. Even if you know that you want an RTX 3080 laptop GPU, which is the, the top end that Nvidia offers right now, you still have to pick which TDP variant or thermal design power you want. And that's on top of already balancing all the other factors like what CPU, RAM, storage, display, keyboard, IO, battery life, and a whole load of other factors. So yeah, it's a complete minefield. But before we tackle that absolute minefield, I need to tell you about this video sponsor, Edify. These are their NeoBuds Pro and they're their first high-res certified true wireless earbuds. They offer high quality sound with punchy bass and touching treble, all in a slim, compact and portable form factor. They even offer active noise cancellation if you want a more isolated listening experience, and Edifier are now selling them on Indiegogo for just $99, so check out the link in the description below, and thank you to Edifier for supporting the channel. Now, in the hopes of explaining the TDP differences, I have two different machines from ASUS. This isn't sponsored by them, they did provide these machines for independent reviews which you can check out in the cards above, and since I still had them from both of those reviews, I thought I would make this comparison as I think it's quite an interesting one. Now the machine on my left is the Zephyrus G15, which has an RTX 3080 laptop GPU with an 80 watt TDP, and the one on my right is the ASUS Strix Scar 15 with an RTX 3080 laptop, but with a 115 watt TDP. Now before we go any further, it's probably a good idea to explain what TDP is, so that you can understand why it can be so important. Like I said, TDP is thermal design power, and that is how much power in watts the chip is designed to, to run at based on the cooling solution in the laptop. The higher the TDP, the more power the chip can run at, and the more power the chip has, the faster it can boost, and the more performance you get out at the end. It is also important to note though that the TDP isn't the final or the maximum power that it can run at, especially because all of these laptops have dynamic boost, which is Nvidia's technology for managing the amount of power that goes to both the CPU and the graphics core and balancing that depending on what game prefers a bit more power in the CPU or a bit more power in the GPU. That has, in these laptops cases, up to either 20 watts more power for a maximum of 100 or up to 15 watts more power for a maximum of 130. In my testing though, the Zephyrus G15 only peaked at about 95, 96 watts of GPU power, whereas the SCAR did max out much closer to that 130. So when comparing these TDP variants, it might be more accurate to say that this is a 95 watt TDP chip and this is 130 watt. But does that mean that this is about 35, 36% faster than this one? Based on the power anyway, it should be, right? Well, the short answer is no, but the long answer is, well, it's not always that simple. The first thing I should point out is that this, despite the CPUs technically being different, this is a Ryzen uh, 95900HS, and the SCAR is a 5900HX. They're both pretty much the same chip. They both actually, in my testing, ran at the same power levels, the same boost speeds, and therefore the same end result, the same end power, and so we are getting as close as I can to isolating variables between just the graphics cards. But just to be sure, and because both of these machines feature the stunning 1440p 165Hz panel, I'll be running the benchmarks here at 1440p. That helps eliminate the CPU bottleneck basically as much as possible in these machines and making the, the results rely more on just the graphics card rather than the balance of both the CPU and the graphics card. Right, enough talk, more numbers. Starting with CSGO, the SCAR15 with its 115 watt TDP chip uh, hit around about 198 FPS average, which is pretty respectable. It hit 102 FPS in the 1% lows, which means with this 165Hz panel, you're going to be having a pretty good time on it. 
Compared to the 80 watt CDP chip in the Zephyrus G15, that one ran a little bit slower, 178 FPS average and 94 FPS in the 1% lows, making the 115 watt version around 11% faster. In Cyberpunk, the 80 watt chip ran at 42 FPS average and the 115 watt one hit 45. That's only 7% faster and only three FPS average difference, meaning you could reasonably attribute at least some of that difference to run-to-run -run variation. I should also note that it is incredibly hot in Britain right now, and you can probably see the sweat rolling off my face, and so the uh, testing that was done on the SCAR was done at a slightly higher ambient temperature than the G15, so it might not have had quite as much thermal headroom to boost quite as hard as it maybe could if it was in a colder climate. Now moving on to watchdogs, that has them pretty close again, 52 FPS for the Zephyrus and 54 for the SCAR, although the extra 4 FPS the SCAR holds in the 1% lows would go a long way to making it feel like a, a better playing experience, even if the average isn't that much higher. Fortnite shows a bigger difference, with the 80 watt chip hitting 79 FPS average, whereas the 115 watt one hit just over 93 FPS. That's nearly 20% faster and is a sizable difference you might actually notice in games. Even the 1% lows are better at over 53 FPS rather than 45. Finally, in Microsoft Flight, the 115 watt chip offers a respectable, at least for this game, 32 FPS average and 18 FPS in the 1% lows, which is up from the 80 watt, chip, 80 watt TDP as 26 FPS average and just 12 FPS in the 1% lows. That makes the 115 watt version 24% faster on average, but still nowhere near the 36% that the power would suggest. But why is that? Well, there is one very good reason, and it's called the law of diminishing returns. The performance that you get out of these chips isn't linear with the amount of power that you put in. It's more of a curve. If we plot the performance that we got from these machines starting from zero, you can see that the line that that creates isn't a straight line, it plateaus as we get higher into the power, and we could reasonably assume if we extrapolate from this data that if you had a, let's say, 160 watt TDP version of this same chip, it would perform a bit better, but really not by all that much. And actually, if you compare to the closest desktop card in terms of core count, which in this case is an RTX 3070, by the way, that desktop card draws 220 watts as standard. But it wouldn't provide two times the amount of performance that this 95 watt TDP version of the laptop chip would provide. The other reason the performance gap between these two might not be quite as big as you'd expect is that even at 1440p, a number of games are still a little bit more dependent on the CPU than perhaps we would like to admit. In fact, there are some games, as we saw, where there is very little difference between these two, and that can be attributed, much like a game like Cyberpunk, to being a little bit more CPU dependent. They're also, because they, the laptops share cooling solutions between the CPU and GPU, it's a very fine balancing act between giving more power to the graphics card so that it can boost a bit higher, but then taking some away from the CPU so that it doesn't boost quite as high, and vice versa. Because of these sort of closed loop systems and the very tight integration between how much power uh, from both the thermal and just straight up power budget goes to each of the components, it's a lot more of a, a finer act than say a desktop chip where reasonably you know, speaking, the graphics card doesn't really affect the CPU's thermals or boosting characteristics, at least in the same way that it would here. So if you want an RTX 3080 laptop based machine, then yes, the higher TDP variant will give you more performance, but it will depend on the game and your resolution as to how much more you'd get over the standard or the, the lower power version. There can be relatively significant differences, but across the board, 
it's not that big a deal, and depending on the price tag, you might end up choosing to save a bit of money and get the lower power version instead. Also, as I noted in the SCAR 15's review, you can actually find some lower end laptops like 3060 and 3070 based machines that thanks to the relatively limited thermal headroom can actually offer very similar levels of performance, especially at 1080p, to both of these 3080 based machines while being significantly cheaper and obviously the, the lower end versions. If I were to throw my own opinion in here, Personally, I would much rather buy one of those lower end 3060 or 3070 based machines and save a whole lot of money and still, in most cases, get very similar performance. I think only if you genuinely have, you know, money burning a hole in your pocket would I personally uh, pick one of these up. Otherwise, the, the value proposition just generally doesn't make that much sense to me. But of course, that's my thoughts. I would love to hear yours in the comments down below. Now, if you wanna check out either of the machines that I've been talking about here, first of all, I'm gonna leave the reviews in the cards above or on the end cards when they pop up. And second, if you wanna see pricing when and where you watch this, feel free to take a look at the top links in the description down below. Those are Amazon affiliate links that will take you to your local Amazon store. We can see all that good stuff. There's also a whole load of other ways to both stay up to date with the channel, of course hitting that subscribe button and the bell notification icon, and ways to support the channel like hitting that YouTube join button for access to our Money Men Discord chat, sponsor free videos, and some cool emojis to use in the comments and on our live streams. Or if you'd prefer to support on Patreon instead, there's a link in the description for that. There's merch or hoodies or t-shirts like this one, this is the uh, wraparound stripes hoodie, uh, or t-shirt, uh, and a load of other designs like an RTX 20. 60 are designed in Blender. Like I said, there's lo loads of other links, places like Overclock GK affiliate links if you're buying from there, VPN options, Humble Bundle, Streamlabs, OBS, and a whole lot else. So feel free to take a look. Like I said, plenty of videos on the end cards to just check out. And that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, leave those in the comments down below as well. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video.